I'm Katherine from KatherineSewing.com. I'm a stay-at-home mom of three, a self-taught sewist, and I love creating historically inspired garments. This garment that I have on is an Edwardian era S-Bend corset that I made using this historical pattern. Now, if you'd like to see the process of turning this pattern into a mock-up to test what changes I needed to make, then please check out my previous video. Also check out the accompanying blog post for this make, which is on katherinesewing.com. There I get into a lot more details that I couldn't get into on the video. If you're interested in seeing how I made this from start to finish, then please keep watching. Okay, so starting out, I'm just cutting out my altered pattern pieces out of my gray-blue colored Coutil fabric. This fabric is especially designed for corset making. And there are all my panel pieces ready to go. And now I'm just pinning them together in order. And I'm also hand basting some of the seams in place that are a little trickier and I'm sewing those together at my sewing machine. Now I'm just pinning together more of the seams. Trimming up those seam allowances so that they'll fit neatly underneath the, my bone casing tape later on. And now I'm going to be pinning in this curved hip panel I'm basting this into place as well because it's such a curved seam. And I'm machine stitching that in place now. As you can imagine, this was pretty slow going because it's so curved. And now I'm pinning on one of the center front facings. Okay, and for the other facing before I sew that on I'm just marking the placement of the busk loops to make sure that I don't sew through those areas and there we go it's all sewn up and the busk fits through nicely okay now for the other center front side this is the knob side of the busk I'm just marking the placement of each knob before poking a hole through with my awl and then getting each knob through one of those holes and there it's all inserted and there we go the busk does up quite nicely and now the exciting part I'm top stitching the busk in place And there we go, all that progress done. I'm just marking the width of the boning channels now for the center back, using one of my strips of boning for that. Now I'm stitching those in place. Now I'm bending my spring steel boning for the center back because as you can see the boning channels are a little bit curved there. And if you bend the bones they create that S-bend shape much more effectively. And now I'm marking how far apart my eyelets are going to be. So I marked them two centimeters apart from each other. And now I'm using my eyelet pliers to punch small holes where each eyelet will be to help me insert them. Before using the pliers to install the eyelets. This was a very tricky part because my pliers were really acting up. Now 
And there we go, they're all done. At this point, I decided to try it on to see how it fit. And as you can see, there's some fit issues in the top. There was too much width. So here I am marking and pinning out extra width from each seam. And there we go, I re-sewed those seams. And thankfully, it turned out well and it fit properly after that. And now I'm neatening up the facings on the inside of the corset. This one I'm folding down the edge before stitching it down. And the center front facing, will, the edge of it, will be hidden underneath the bone casing tape. Now I'm marking some boning channels in the back and pinning on the boning channel tape. And now I'm pinning some boning channel tape over top of that curved hip seam, which is on the outside of the corset. And pinning on some boning channel tape over top of these seams now. Now I'm sewing the casing tape over top of the curved hip seam. Now sewing on some of those boning channels. Each of these needed two seams on either edge as well as a seam down the middle because they're wide enough to hold two strips of boning. Now I'm just encasing the raw edges of this hip panel seam in a strip of cotille. Sewing on some more boning channels. And now I'm cutting and filing my synthetic whale bone before inserting that into the boning channels. Some of these were a pretty tight fit, so it took me some time. And there we go, there's one half done. And finally, I'm going to be finishing the edges, also using the same boning channel tape. Very convenient. So first, I'm just pinning that onto the inside of the corset. Machine stitching that side in place. And now I've folded it over onto the right side of the corset, the outside, and I'm hand stitching it down. And here's the finished corset. I'm just showing some extra boning channels that I decided to add after it was done for stability. Okay everybody, so I finally finished my Edwardian corset and here I am, I'm wearing it now. I love the style and it's very comfortable and I really like the shape it gives in the back. So here I'd just like to get into some details that, that may not have been quite clear from the video. My main concern when making this corset is that I want it to be very long lasting. I wanted to make sure there weren't any points of stress or tension that could cause tears over time. The first thing that I noticed that I wanted to fix was that at the center back with the four um, bones, the steel bones, first of all they were bent to create that S-curved shape which was very exciting when I figured out that you can bend spring steel bones. The outermost curved bone was causing tension on the fabric that it was encased in. Just the way it was curved was kind of pushing outward on the fabric. So I actually added a third bone on each side, kind of almost overlapping that outermost bone, and that totally solved the problem. So now there's no areas of tension there. Um, I also, after I was almost done, I realized that it could really use another bone right here to prevent any tension from the busk and this bone here on this area of fabric. So I added another bone casing tape down here. And lastly, I added another bone on the waist area because this 
triangular section here, I could tell it was under some tension, and so I added one more bone there. So that may have not been entirely historically accurate because they probably did not use that many bones in this era, but I'm going for what I like, what I think will be long lasting. Now, one last thing that I noticed that may be good information for any of you who may be planning on creating this pattern was that if you look at this pattern, for some reason, it only shows where the boning channels are at the back half of the corset, and it did not give any information about where to place the boning channels in the front half. So I decided to just put boning casing tape over top of the seams themselves. But after I'd already made that decision, I found a, an illustration of this exact corset. They had actually placed the boning channels going vertically, so separate from the seams. Some of these pieces here have horizontal wrinkles, and I can't help but believe that if there had been more vertical bones in this area, it would have counteracted that wrinkling. So whatever, it's done now. I hope this doesn't affect the structural integrity of the corset. And then also something I didn't show on camera was I just did some bone flossing. I got very lazy by the end. There was no way I was going to be doing bone flossing on every single bone. And also that I don't believe flossing was such a huge thing with the Edwardian corsets. It's more a Victorian thing where you see the flossing on every single bone and it's very decorative. So I just did flossing on the areas that I thought could really use it in the interest of finishing up this project and saving my poor fingers from any more pricks. <laughs> but yeah, I love this corset. It was very fun making it. It was a learning experience and I hope it was fun and a learning experience for you guys as well. If you enjoyed watching this and you'd like to have more details of the making process, then please check out katherinesewing.com. The matching blog post for this make will be posted. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please just give it a thumbs up because I'm a new channel and any support in terms of subscribing or giving it a thumbs up is so helpful at this stage and it's really encouraging for me too. Also, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below and I will respond as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you all later. Bye!